We dabblers are no strangers to the liquid lunch, but for the past 20 years, Finnegan's has been using their beer to fight hunger, literally. This year, Finnegan's passed a big milestone. They've donated over $2 million to help keep food shelves stocked and combat food insecurity in our community. We headed over to their gorgeous downtown Minneapolis tap room to talk with head brewer Ryan about their Brim Reaper Rye IPA. Music isn't a commodity. It's a craft. That's why we go to work every day, pounding the sidewalks and venue floors of communities big and small to discover, empower, and celebrate new and important voices shaping the future of music's history. Jackie Berglund, the owner of Finnegan's, she always wants to give back. Technically, a brewery cannot be a nonprofit, so we have a second LLC. All of our profits that we make in the brewery, we actually give back to the food shelf. Um, so we work with a company called The Food Group. Every dollar that we give them goes towards a pound of organic produce to go to any of the food shelves and to homes around town too. In 20 years, pretty much if you look at it, we are able to give back to the community 100,000 pounds or $100,000 per year of our profits. So we just hit the two million mark this year, right around August, which is pretty cool too. Finnegan's has been around for 20 years. Um, for 17 of those years, we were known for two beers, a blonde ale and an Irish amber. For the last three years, since January 18th of 2018, we started brewing on our own. We were contract brewed by Summit for 17 or 15 of the 17 years prior. Two of them were at James Page uh, before James Page sold out to Miller. I got hired uh, four months till we could really brew. So it was kind of just setting up, getting, you know, setting up with malt suppliers and hop suppliers and different things like that. Kind of getting the everything going to actually brew because this building was still being built, it's brand new. Jackie, in a certain way, was a business owner, which is great. She kind of just, as you said, show me what you can do. If I don't like it, I'll tell you, which is most things. How I kind of approach is to stick to more classic styles. I started off with a Czech Pilsner, just to kind of get people to drink more of our stuff, but then also to kind of show people with this brewery alone what I like to brew as well. All breweries don't necessarily need to make just one style. We kind of can branch out, make a whole bunch of different styles, especially when it comes to like some of the classics like lagers, American IPAs, Belgians too. I do wish that Minnesotans would drink more Belgians, personally, because I would brew a lot more of them and put them in cans. So Finnegan's here, we're gonna bring Brim Reaper, our rye IPA to you for the Dabbler in a Box number four. I'm really excited about this beer. It's always kind of one we would do as a fall seasonal. We also brought it out one other time for our variety pack of all IPAs a couple times. As a variant, we kind of have changed it three or four or five times because it's more fun that way. So it's got a little nutty character to it, um, a little oak from some of the kind of oak quality from some of the hops that we use. So in this one, this version, I did a lot of Citra, uh, Cascade, and um, a little bit of Mandarina Bavaria. And then for dry hopping, a, little, a lot more Citra and a little Sriracha Ace in this one too. So to kind of bring out the notes of lemon, lemongrass, and then you know the notes of Citra, which are all the citrus, all that deliciousness, uh, and then Cascade just kind of add a little grapefruit too, to kind of like mellow it out a little bit. The whole point of kind of making a really kind of citrus forward and also hop forward rye IPA is also to kind of meld with what the rye can do, the kind of spicy undertones that you're kind of getting from that malt too. You know, it's good for the fall, kind of when the temperature's starting to dip and you want something a little hoppier, but a little bit more body with a little bit of that kind of like wintery character to it, I think that's the rye's gonna be good.
our goal here at Finnegan's actually when starting to brew here was to try to use as much local Minnesota ingredients as possible. We've used Mighty Axe hops, we've used Maltworks malt, but using Maltworks is also just like, we know that it's from way up north and just like they're plump and also just using those beers, I know that actually almost every time that I use them, I can actually use less base malt because there's the yield on them is really, really great. And the pale malt that goes into this one kind of adds a little bit of that kind of orange kind of color to this beer, but also kind of gives a little bit of that nuttiness that goes along with it too, so. Upcoming, uh, as usual, uh, it'll be a third in a row starting in January. Instead of this year doing Dark Week, which we tap a new dark beer every day for a whole seven days in a row um, because of the limitations of people being inside and things like that, we've decided to kind of do a dark month. Instead of doing a new beer every week, there might be two or three a week. Uh, we might bring some old classics back that we might have like two or three kegs of, Carthenoc, Imperial Stout. Still planning on putting out about three or four of the new ones for the entire month. You know, a new bottle to come out in January as well, Big Stout as well. So um, there's that. And then back in October 15th, uh, we released a beer called Pumpkin Flanders that was brewed with uh, Brown Family Farm pumpkins. Thanks for trying out Finnegan's Broom Reaper in the Dabbler in the Box Volume 4. Hope you really liked it. I uh, hope you like everybody else's beers as well. So cheers to everybody that put a beer in there. Cheers to everybody that bought one. So we appreciate it.